Hello everyone. Today I am not in my studio. I am out in the desert to take some pictures for my new movie ritual. But this bloody bug's making me crazy. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. I am still in the desert. But now in an improvised studio. Look at this, isn't it nice in here? Today I will talk about how to make an animated tutorial with Daz Studio, Power Director and Audio Director. This tutorial will be divided in four parts. Part 1, Folder Management, Screen Prints, Screen Videos, Scripting and Creating AI Voices. Part 2, Creating Animations in the Studio, Rendering and Importing the JPEG Files in PowerDirector. Part 3, Video and Sound Editing. Putting all together in Power Director. Part 4 Tips and tricks such as a trial tutorial with downloadable files from my Google Drive. Okay, let's start with the basics. At the very first beginning, you need to create some folders. Folder management is very important. Without a good folder management, you will lose your mind. So, my recommended folders are shown in this picture. Please create them now. After you have created your folders, we will have a first look at PowerDirector. If you open the software the first time, it should look like this. At the top left side, you find some icons. Play a bit around with them. We will talk about all of them later on. Now we will remove the sample files from the library. We do not need them for our project. Just make a right click into the library and select empty the library. All files should be removed now. To adjust the workspace windows, just left click and hold into the dotted fields. Now you know about the basics of PowerDirector. We will come back to PowerDirector later on in this tutorial. You already know how to make screen prints you can move over to the next step if you are working with the windows pc under windows 10 you should have installed the snipping tool app from the app store it's free and very useful the app is available in many languages for the following steps you need to download the app and install it after installing the app we will have a look at it open it and it should look like this now we will take a screenshot. Click on new and choose the left icon. With this you can choose an area of your choice. Click and hold to create an area. If you stop holding your mouse button the screen print will be ready to save or print or as you like. If you want to show something in the screenshot you can use the painting tool. Just click and hold. or you would like to resize the screen print. In this case, you can use the resizing tool. Now you know the basics how to use the snipping tool from Microsoft and how to make screen prints. It might be very useful for your tutorials. Don't forget to save the screenshot. Just click on save on the top right side. PowerDirector offers a wide range of powerful tools. We will now look at the basics of using the screen recording tool. Screen recording is one of the most used features in tutorials. There are many software available, but I recommend this tool. It's very easy to use and makes good results. To open the screen capture function in PowerDirector, click on the capture tab on the top left side. 
Now click on the video screen with the red dot. In the pop-up window you can adjust the settings. If you want to know more about the settings of the capture function, just click on the question marks or check the homepage of Cyberlink. PowerDirector offers a huge range of tutorials also on YouTube. There is one important point I would like to talk about. There are two different TV standards, NTSC and PAL. If you are planning to publish your videos on TV or DVD, you need to change the frames per second rate in PowerDirector and also in Disk Studio. PAL standard is 25 frames per second, NTSC standard is 30 frames per second. To change the frames per second in PowerDirector is easy. Just click on the sun icon on top of the workspace. In the general tab you can change the preferences of your video. In the studio just change the FPS in your timeline. If you only want to publish your videos on YouTube you do not need to care about NTSC or PAL. But I recommend to use always the same frame rate in the studio and in PowerDirector. Before you start creating AI voices, and for a better overview of your tutorial you need to write a script. I recommend Microsoft Word, but you can use any other software if you like. The easiest way to prepare the voices is in your script. Write the speeches down for a good procedure. To create an individual voice for our character we move over to replicastudios.com. On this website we will find many different voices. If you want to know more about creating AI voices, I recommend my tutorial Analyp 2 Plus PowerPost with Human A Voices. After you have registered to this website we can start creating our individual voice. Just copy and paste the text out of your script. You can choose between different voices in different styles. If you are okay with it, just click on download. The download starts immediately and is for free. Now your voice file should be remastered for finishing. To remaster your voice file you need to add some filters or maybe some effects. We start with a noise gate filter and a equalizer. Play a bit around with this and you will get good results. If you do not own Analyp 2 at this moment, it's time to get it from the DAS 3D marketplace. After your purchase you need to register the plugin in your DAS Studio software. I hope you found this part of my tutorial helpful. Then do not forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell. See you in the next part. Stay tuned. I will stay here for a while. Oh my god, look at this.